Hello, ladies and gentlemen. That is really loud. I need to turn that down. This is Blue Maxima, and I'm here checking out Mario plus Rabbids Kingdom Battle. I never thought I'd see the bloody day that these two franchises of all things would be together in the same game. Very unusual indeed. Let's go have a look at it. So, I'm currently... Well, the game says I'm one third of the way through the main story, but there's a ton of other stuff to do. And this is in three hours or so. So, I can see this having a fair bit of legs. Depending on whether or not you like the gameplay, of course, but... Well, we're about to go and see that, aren't we? So here we are in Peach's castle. This serves as the hub world. We can come and talk to Princess Peach. Generally, you're supposed to be able to... You're supposed to be able to play as her in this game, so I don't know why she's just standing there and being annoying about it. That's the Battle HQ. We'll get to that later. There are a few other things around, like... The worlds are on the outside and all your facilities are on the inside. The museum is where you go to see all the stuff you've been picking up. The game has an absolute ton of chests that you can do by doing specific mini-games and winning challenges and stuff like that. But I haven't gotten very many of them and frankly I'm, I'm not particularly one to care if you want me to be honest. But it's here if you like doing 100% collectibles. Rabid Peach loves her phone for some reason. There is also the ability to replay any story chapter you want for better ratings. That's what you do with the washing machine. You can go and scan in some amiibos, which are over on the left there. And there is also a co-op campaign, but I don't have any friends, so I wasn't able to particularly check that one out. But it's there. We'll just go and play where I'm up to so far in the main story, which is halfway through World 2. Now, this game has structure a little bit like the original Mario's, where... It's World 2 or World 1 or whatever, dash however many stages you are in, and every stage consists of a battle or two or three, and at the end you get your health restored. So there are points where you have to there are points where you have to go through three battles with the same health bar all the time, which is kind of annoying. But let's go have a look around first before we actually go on to that level. So you can come have a look around and see that, well, honestly. Despite the fact that the world really does look quite pretty, there's not actually that much to do in these areas. You have the... You have the ability to come and talk to people. I believe Toad and Toadette will have a cutscene or at least something to say to us. <laughs> oh man, it's... It, it's a weird sense of humor. We'll get onto that, but... You can just wander around these areas, but there's not really that much to do in them outside of the battles. There are red coin challenges, and there are cannons that will shoot you away to do other really simple challenges. Like, think simpler than Super Mario 3D World or Super Mario 3D Land, and you get the general idea. There's just not really that much to do out here outside of them, except from get to one place to another. So we might as well just go and head straight into the next stage and see what will come across us. We do have the Battle HQ menu to go through, which is where you do the majority of your upgrading and equipment. We're probably going to have a puzzle or two to, to do before we get to that, though. Oh, no, apparently not. So, might as well open up the Battle HQ while we're, before we go into battle. So, there's a few things you can do in here. You can select your team. And your team is, well, it's a combination of three people, not four. It feels a bit weird to have only three people, but there you go. And all of these guys have their own different things they can do. So yeah, Rabbit Mario apparently is a physical, more, a more physical brawler type. Luigi is a sniper. Rabbit Luigi is support. Rabbit Peach is a more of a support healer. And Mario is a pretty good attacker. I'm just going to stick with the basic three for now because that's generally what I know and what I've outfitted because... It actually costs a lot of money to outfit these guys. So as you can see here, all these different weapons t cost an absolute ton of flippin' money. You get a lot of money if you do well enough in the game itself, but... Good lord if it doesn't cost an absolute ton. We're going to equip this, this weapon here on Rabbit Luigi because we do kind of need him to be a fair bit stronger. And we've got 800 coins left, so I might as well give... Mario a better weapon as well. I, I like bounce damage because if you hit them out of the map, 
it will do a ton of extra damage on top. And you unlock new weapons via finding them in crates or getting to a specific area. The unfortunate thing, though, is that you have to actually buy them once you've unlocked them, which is really annoying. But anyway, if we go to the skill tree... No, I don't want to reset all my skills. If we go to the skill tree, you can see that we have skill orbs, and it took me a little while to figure out that you can use your skill orbs... Everybody gets skill orbs. Everybody gets skill orbs. But you also have all these different abilities you can spend them on. You've got your three main abilities here, which also unlocks your fourth tree, and then your rest of your trees are unlocked via getting the first ability in each. I'm going to just auto-fill this just so I don't waste too much time, but it means that there's a little bit of upgrading to do from time to time. I can just fill everybody's skill tree. It doesn't really matter. And there's all sorts of different little abilities you can get, like extra health and extra health from mushrooms, which you get from time to time, movement range, upgrading your abilities, upgrading your secondary weapon, and upgrading your movement. You get a fair amount of skill orbs as you go through. Every stage you beat gives you a few extra skill orbs, and you can also find them out in the world at some places. But as soon as we cross the little threshold here, we'll be given some enemies to fight. You can also turn on an easy mode at any time, which gives you 50% extra health, along with full health entirely. Which is pretty neat, because you... it doesn't actually punish you for it. You can still get a perfect mark, even if you select it, which is something I actually really appreciate, considering this is probably a game intended for kids. But anyway, talking about a game made for kids, let's talk about the fact that it's bloody kids first XCOM. That's, that's kind of great. I never thought I would see Nintendo approve of an XCOM game, but we will go and do this anyway. So, the way this works is that every turn, everyone gets three actions. They get their weapon, they get this one of their special abilities, and they get the ability to move. Being able to move means they can also do a bunch of different things. Like, you can... If you manage to get in range of a guy and walk over him, you can actually do damage and then run back to where you were, which is a very useful tactic for hit-and-run style thing, which, um, Rab and Mario would probably excel at that. You can also do what's called a team jump. So if you select a, one of your teammates, you can then get thrown to a distance that they can reach. So that's actually quite useful for doing some really quick movements around the map. We're not going to do exactly that. We're just going to do this. And there are also special effects on all the weapons. Like, for example, Rabbit Peach has push. Uh, uh, Rabbit Luigi has the fire ability on his um, rocket and vampire on his weapon. And Mario has bounce on both things. And these are all different things that these weapons can do if they successfully hit someone. So let me allow me to show you just what one of those looks like. Because we happen to have one of the support skill blocks out in the open there. I just want to make sure... Actually, no, Rabbit Luigi, you can stay there. I'll see what happens to these guys before I move you. So, I hit that, and I hit everybody. Then Mario's Overwatch ability goes off, which means he hits someone again, and that's basically a kill for whoever it hit twice, which is fantastic. But anyway, now Peach is in range of this, so I'm actually going to hit him with her secondary, which is basically this drone landmine thing that just absolutely blows the crap out of everyone. And then I'm going to activate her shield ability, which will help you protect yourself from the damage that she's about to get. Now, if I was Mario, I could actually jump on his head and deal damage to him via a throw, but unfortunately I am not Mario right now. But I can still take cover behind this and fire off the Saturn rocket. And since this will inflict burn damage, he's definitely dead. No, apparently it didn't. It must be luck-based as well. That's unfortunate. Uh, no point using a special ability, so we'll just leave him behind cover. The way cover in this game works is that 50% cover, which is, you know, waist height, or chest height, however you want to put it, will give you a 50% chance of getting hit or being missed. 100%, a full cover will give you 0% chance to be hit, so it will always block the shot. And the 100, and the... If you're out in the open, like Peach is right now, that is a 100% chance of being hit. Oh, these fucking grenades. I hate those godforsaken grenades. They're a massive pain in the, in the ass to deal with, but... Well, it didn't hurt us that badly, so I'm not particularly annoyed by it. So, let's do something a little interesting. 
Right, I should be able to take him out in one shot after the dash. Wait, no, damn it, I'm an idiot. I, I forgot to do the actual dash into him, because this game's UI is kind of annoying. It's got a lot of weird things going for it, this game does, with its UI and stuff. But thankfully, I managed to get the critical hit, and he is dead. He was a support character, and he can heal his teammates, so I do not want him to be alive for too long. And thankfully, he's not. Now, I need some... Well, I could put Peach in either place. Either place will work. Might as well take a shot. Probably not going to hit. I actually hit him! That's cool. So the actual strategy basically just boils down to this, because there is an absolute ton of... There is an absolute ton of stages, and the layouts for the most part don't change very much. It's like... Ooh, he's next to a bounce crate. That's bad for him, because if I can hit that, he will go flying. And they've got two bruises up there. Shit. That'll be fun to deal with. I didn't realize they had two bruises. This, this is going to be a huge problem. They can go through pipes too, so if he comes down here, I'm going to have a bit of an issue. But anyway, you die. I'm going to need to get everyone as far away from the, um... I'm going to need to get everyone as far away from the pipe as possible. Because when this little roving landmine here runs into that brawler, he's going to charge right at us. Because these are, these are seriously some of the most annoying enemies you can imagine. So I want to get everyone as far away from that pipe as possible. And actually, if I move Mario here... It should be a good enough range to... Oh well, it'll heal him. That'll work. So yeah, there, there are an absolute ton of stages in this game, and they all revolve around the same thing. You do get some variation from time to time. Like, for example, you do get a... Brain work with me here. You do get a few odd objectives from time to time. For example, you'll end up in the last well, couple of stages that I played in this stage. I had to escort Toad, which meant getting him to the end without getting him too badly damaged or anything like that. There is also get to the goal, which will require you to do something along the lines of, um... Which will require you to do something along the lines of... Do... Just basically just get there while the enemies are infinitely respawning. That's what I'm trying to say. But for the most part, it's all pretty um, basic stuff. Nothing too out of the ordinary when it comes to strategy like this. What really gives the game its legs, though, is the... Right, I'm going to have to get her up here and have her beat the crap out of this guy. Thankfully, this will definitely kill him no matter what. The thing that keeps this game going is mainly the Mario theme and, by extension, the Rabbids theme. There are some cutscenes that are that do the weirdest thing of making the rabbits actually somewhat likable, but then turning around and making them the most annoying bosses on the planet. Like, the rabbit here who is more or less a, um... The rabbit here is, who's more or less a... I probably should have, um, moved everyone else up. That was pretty dumb of me. Let's get you out of that corner, rabbit, rabbit Luigi. Like, the rabbit peach is actually portrayed in-game as a Peach cosplayer who takes himself way too seriously. Which is kind of a fantastic concept for a Rabbids character. But then at the same time, you'll have that scene we had back in the main menu where... You'll, you'll have that scene we had back in the main menu where, for whatever bloody reason, they decided to make a Rabbid just fart on the title screen and not really make a joke out of it. It's just weird. I'm not entirely sure why they do stuff like that when they've got something along the lines of... When they've got something along the lines of, like, legitimate humour that it actually makes me laugh. For example, I recently just got Rabbit Mario as a party member, and his introductory cutscene was going over to the actual Mario, giving him the up and the down look, and then pulling out a ukulele and doing the Mario theme on it. And I legitimately thought that was actually kind of clever. Which really disappointed me, because when you've got just, like, farts that come out of nowhere and just 
aren't particularly clever or interesting, which is a weird thing to say about farts, I know, but bear with me here. When you've got stuff like, um, like, when you've got legitimately interesting jokes and gags, having stuff like that is just kind of disappointing more than anything else. We might be able to see one of those cutscenes, but as far as I can tell, you can't actually watch them once you have gone past them the first time. Maybe you'd be able to do it by replaying the story level for, uh, more, for more points, but I haven't actually checked that because that would mean, I think I might have lost my place, or at least I wasn't going to risk losing my place because I was halfway through World 2 at the time, and technically I still am, but... Whatever. The actual strategy gameplay though, pretty damn good. I mean, I really wasn't expecting this to work as well as it does, but when you've got a bunch of unique little traits, like turning the... Turning, like, the Mario abilities, for example, into their own things and, you know, giving him the ability to, like, go and jump on his mates in order to do bonus damage to everybody, right? Like, doing all that sort of stuff. It's just an interesting idea and it's an interesting way of playing around with the Mario... I don't want to call it the, the typical Mario style, but at the same time, that is kind of what it is. Just taking advantage of all the usual Mario tropes, I think I'll call it, to create such an interesting idea around gameplay and stuff like that, like burning and bouncing and stuff like that. It, it works surprisingly well and it actually kind of fits in the formula. So you saw there that the stage would have awarded, um, would have awarded me better if I'd gone the, actually gone and finished in a faster number of turns. I'm not entirely sure why that Guys, um, I'm not entirely sure why the crusher there just got stuck, but there you go. Ooh, cutscene. Ah, oh, new trooper, huh? And a few lackeys backing him up. This is pretty standard fare. You'll need to flank them. Right, that makes sense. Their dash can also be explosive, or that they're lucky shots, or they use honey in combat. Okay. That's actually quite useful. So, basically just stay the fuck away from them and get behind them. Makes sense to me. So, let's just get into the fight. Let's see, what can we do here? Well, I do want to try and take out all the lackeys, but I want to stay up here because the the higher damage would work in my favor. I don't want to fire off Hero Side just yet because I'd end up more or less losing it to when he moves and doesn't get hit by the attack. Well, I'll, I'll send Low Blow after him. Why not? That'll be one thing down at least. And I might as well get Rabid Luigi to fire off a rocket at that second guy. Ah, oh, my line of sight's blocked. That's gay. Uh, alright, I'll just fire that. Why not? Oh, now he's got no cover whatsoever. That might actually end badly for me. Uh, well, Mario can still fire, and you can actually hit him. That'll just leave that drone out there as a landmine, which might not be too useful, but, well, we'll wait and see, won't we? I don't think anyone's ability is going to help them out here. You can see how my health hasn't actually been restored, which is actually kind of an interesting mechanic. Also, I'm going to activate Fast Forward here, so you don't have to spend too long watching these moves, because it's probably about as annoying... Oh my god, that's a shotgun. It's probably about as annoying watching the slow moves as me taking time to make my moves, but there you go. I can kill him if I hit him. Fuck it, I'll try it. Yeah, I actually got him! Awesome! Alright, now, how do I plan on doing this? Because... I can actually jump these guys over... Yeah, let's do that. I, I can jump these two over behind this guy. And actually hurt him pretty badly. I'll activate Hero Sight now just to be safe, because I don't think he's going to be moving from that position. And... Peach, I can do the same thing, so I might as well get her up and over here. There we go. Just, let's do this. Destruction zone. 
Well, it hurt him. That's good. Uh, and Lost Bro Swags, why not? And that was actually a critical hit, which means he gets a ton of health back from that, which is actually pretty nice. And now Mario can move, and I'm half tempted to actually get him out of the way, but at the same time, it's probably going to sting a little if I do. But at the same time, he's probably just going to turn around and blast those two in the face. So I might as well actually activate shield and immunity to super effects. And now Mario... Thanks for leaving me in a tough position, game. Uh, I'll, I'll move him down here. I'll be interested to see what this guy's AI does. Oh god, he actually did go for me! That, that did sting a bit, but thankfully, I get to do... Do I get to do that? I do! And I win! Oh, that is awesome! Alright! That was a hell of a grenade throw. But anyway, that actually did me a favour. That moved Peach closer to this other rabbit. Now that other rabbit has to kind of panic, but now Mario has to kind of deal with the fact that here comes another grenade. God damn it. Yeah, that's not going to move now, because it doesn't... Ah, great. Alright. Plan. Plan, plan, plan. Move him in for the dash attack, then circle him back around to here. And now ceramic panic is... Ceramic panic his face. So I can guarantee he's not going to live through much more of that. And can I fire the rocket down? Yes, but it'll hurt Mario. And what happens if I just use his regular gun? I stand a 50% chance of hitting him. I'd rather take the 50% chance. I missed, but it has left him without cover, which is an interesting position for him to be in. Thirty damage. That's pretty good. Now let's low blow his ass. Yes, that is not entirely what I wanted, but I'll take it. And I'll heal these two up just to be safe. There's no point weakening because they're not close enough. End the turn, please. Oh dear, he's done the heal, and now he's going to throw a grenade up there? Okay. I mean, you had Mario right there, and you decided not to go for him. A little odd, but... Oh, here comes another grenade. And that barely hurt at all. Alright, the AI is acting a little weird, but it can heal itself pretty well. So, I do need to do something about that rather quickly. Thankfully, I can actually get up here and... Oh, I can't dash attack twice. That, that sucks. Uh, I do want to keep Mario down here, but I'm not entirely sure where I can put him that won't kill him, but... This'll do, I guess. Come on, bounce. Damn it. Oh, I should have used my, um, weapon power-up, shouldn't I? Okay, what else can I do? Can I actually aim at him? Can I actually aim my rocket at him this time without hurting Mario? Nope, no line of sight. Alright, fine. Last Barry swallowed in the face. 65 damage, but no critical hit. That's kind of unfortunate. We'll hit him with a kick. And we'll drop down here to help Mario, because he's going to need it. And, um... Get Mario to throw us over here. Huh? Very well done, turn. Alright. That worked out really well, actually. And now Peach can finish the fight. Okay, done. And that was actually the end of the stage. So I get graded on how I did in all my fights. I didn't do absolutely fantastically, but I did manage to do pretty well, which got me a fair few extra coins. And 
Now we get to continue. I can actually show you what a puzzle in this game looks like. So, we can also open the crate here to get a new piece of artwork, I believe. Right? Yep. So, how do we do this? We need to get in there to... Aha, uh -huh, so that's where the other switch is. So it looks like we have to do a little bit of puzzling, my dudes. Okay, so I'm guessing this is how we do it. Yep, that's how we do it. Controls in this mode are a little bit hard to work around, especially in the ones where they make you rush to grab stuff. It's kind of annoying, but... It's... It's a nice little distraction from all the tactical battles and all that, but it's just kind of... It's just kind of weird that that's the only thing they could think of to give these areas a little bit more... I don't know, stuff to do, personality, you name it, it's probably in here somewhere. Just these weird little puzzles that don't really have that much to do with anything that's related to the actual game. I'm guessing they're only put in there because it's meant for kids, and so, you know, they want to be doing that for kids as much as possible, but... But whatever. We could spend time doing that, or we could just continue on, which is mainly what I've been doing when I see a puzzle like this that I don't have to actually do. Which is, it is kind of nice that you can skip it, and the fact that the 100% completion... Oh, red coin ring. The fact that the 100% completion only seems to be something along the lines of, um... Just collecting, like, 3D models and stuff like that, and not actual, like, gameplay content is nice! It's just a little odd that they make you do all this. Also, this is the only way you unlock some weapons, and you never really know what's going to do what until you actually go and do it yourself, which is kind of annoying. But at the same time, they do tell you where to go to get some of your weapons, so if you've missed one, you know where to go back and look for it later on, which is all good and dandy. So yeah, Mario gets a new... Rabbit Mario, I should say, gets a new weapon. And instead of going to the next stage, I think I'm going to go back to World 1 and show you one of the challenges, which is, you know, something that I could do at least. Yes, I do want to quit the game, thank you. Because it'll just, it'll just put me back in the pub world anyway, which is fine by me. At least I hope it does. So instead of wasting the effort to go and go into the world and walk through the world and all that, you can actually go to challenges you've already found via the time traveling washing machine, which is all the odder. There is a story to this game, but there's not really that much to it. It's literally just some crazy genius in the real world invented the ability to combine two different objects into one. And somehow the rabbits found used their time traveling washing machine to get into this world, they took the thing, got stuck in the washing machine with a Super Mario poster. Very odd, but whatever. It's not like it's a massive thing. So anyway, the challenge here is to defeat 13, 14 enemies in three turns. This is going to be quite the effort, if you couldn't tell, because defeating this many enemies in one go is actually kind of a massive pain to deal uh, to, uh, to actually do. But, we can actually do pretty decently if we manage our positioning correctly. Activate Hero Sight. So anyone who does move is basically just going to get a face full of shit. Uh, move through him, move through him. Nope, can't do more than two people one turn, so... Better idea, use the second one over here on this guy, and then return to cover. Yeah, 
I did actually try to do this challenge before, but I wasn't powered up enough for it. So that's why I'm here doing it now. I'm basically just wiping the floor with it. I'm surprised it's as easy as it is. But then again, that's what happens when you get more powerful in games like this. You just wipe the floor with literally everything in your path, which is a nice thing to do. I'm going to hold on to the landmine drone for a little bit. It's more useful to beat the ever-loving bejesus out of as many dudes as I can before I use that. Because trust me, you'll, I, I probably... I probably want to hold on to it, because here come more enemies. Whoop, ow. Sorry, Mario. But now Mario gets to beat the crap out of him. Yay for bouncing. I'll just press Y to fast forward everything. Mario took a beating there, but that's alright. Alright, heroes! Movement! Beat the crap out of him! And I didn't mean to press A and skip that. Shit, that might turn into a problem. Might as well weaken everything that I can, because it's not like um, making me invincible to super effects is going to do anything. Uh, kick him. And there's no point doing anything else, so I'll just... Oh, well, I could use my hammer. No, I can't use my hammer. This turn, at least. I'll make my way over here after I do that, then. And shoot this guy already in cover in the back. Or in the front. Off the edge, you guys. It's kind of satisfying to do that, actually. But yeah, despite my misgivings about the game's plot and, well, pretty much everything else that's not the actual strategy gameplay, the actual strategy gameplay is actually pretty fun. And I will give the game a lot of credit for somehow managing to make a pretty damn good strategy game out of flipping Mario of all things. Actually, let's, let's just get rid of these two so that Rabbit Peach can focus on what's important. And I think we're I think we're good on letting this one guy live out his last turn. No. Alright, Mario. Let's get over there and um jump on his head and then shoot him in the back. That's gonna stay. Hey. So yay, more coins, more power orbs. I'll go do one more challenge and then we'll end this video, but yeah, the actual gameplay, despite being... Oh, right, I actually have to go and wander around in the le actual level for it. That's kind of annoying, but we'll go do it anyway, because why not? The actual gameplay is really good, though. The characters are all varied. The maps, despite being rather simple, do get helped out a bit with extra objectives and stuff like that. And there is some replayability available in there, because they do encourage you to come back with power-ups you find in later areas. I might actually be able to show that off, considering you don't actually get the push ability until you beat... You know, I'll teleport to, um, here, because there might actually be a challenge here that I can just get to straight away, which would be nice. But yeah, there's a bit of replayability in there, and it, it, it works really well just as a concept. Yep, there he is. Let me see if I can find something to push around and see if I can unlock anything while I'm here. I don't think there is this early on in the stage, but nah, it was worth a look. We'll go play the challenge instead. I won't keep you waiting too long. Challenge two is easy, considering I wasn't able to do the very easy challenge before. Easy ought to be a cakewalk. Okay, so apparently I need to get Toad out of here. Toad can't attack, so this will be fun. I can move, so I can't kick more than once, but if I move over to Rabbit Peach, I can come back and I can jump on this dude's head 
which will get me a bit of extra damage, and then I can set myself down here. Now, if I take Toad, because Toad is his own character in this, right, I can't actually move him out of the way of this. Fuck it, we're doing it anyway. Rest in pieces, those bastards. Alright, Toad. Where the fuck am I taking you again? <laughs> right, over there. And I can't get him over there the sh by any sort of short way around, so... Unfortunately, he can't do, like, the... He can't do the fancy jumping or anything like that, so that kind of sucks for him, but oh well. Okay, Peach. I don't actually think there are any enemies on the field right now. They're going to start spawning at the end of this turn, so... I'm going to want to put my guys in decent places to try and combat them. So... That more or less ought to do it? And I might want to get a heal in just so Toad doesn't... isn't running around with three-quarter health and just dies in one shot or whatever. That would be quite embarrassing. Okay, all the enemies just showed up immediately. That's kind of unfortunate, because that means they're going to get a taxi out if I don't do anything about them. So the first thing I'll do is I'll get Toad out of the way this time. Yeah! Now, Mario! I can shoot any one of these I want and they will just die immediately, so let's do that. And I'll move in, jump off his head. Oh no, I can't jump off his head, but I can hurt him. And then take cover again. I can activate every- um, I can give everyone some extra proper weapon damage, but I don't think I'll need to be doing that because these two are just going to die immediately anyway because this is the first stage of challenges. I'm guessing they mean you to come back here and do these after you beaten it because this is surprisingly easy, but... Oh, well... Silver Bells, or whatever you might say. <laughs> Yep, and the turn again. Here come more enemies in pretty much the same spots, except there's one over the so over the side now. Okay, Toad, you need to keep running, little buddy, because you're not going to get to the end if I can't do if I can't take care of this. Right. Uh, Toad, ra um, Luigi Rabbit. Okay, apparently I can't hit him, but I can hit him for some reason. That's a little odd, but whatever, we'll live with it. We'll hit those two. Just kill them both. Just to make sure they're out of my way. And then shoot this guy. I haven't actually been using him. I've just been using Luigi proper, because Luigi proper is a sniper, and I like my snipers in these games, but... This is a little odd. Alright, they're all dead, and Peach can still move, but I'm not gonna I'm not going to get it to move. I want Mario to catch up just in case. And this is why I wanted to do the just in case, because look at that. There is a bloody cra um, crashy guy right there. And he can hit like a fucking truck. So I want Toad to be out of there once again. Mario. Please tell me you can move up to the print. Yes, you can. Which means you can jump off this guy's head and land as far away from him as possible because this will, will probably start charging you. Nope, he isn't actually going to charge me this time. All right. Well, one way or another, he needs to die immediately. So we're going to make sure that happens. Well, thankfully, he hurts his mate. And his mate dies because he only has 50 health. Thank God that my guys can tank this shit. Uh, 55, yeah, if he dies. And Luigi. Rabid Luigi, I should say. Just take him out. There we go. They do have weapon ranges and stuff like that, but it doesn't really seem to be mattering that much for the first couple of stages. And I'll move Luigi up here, but it's not like it matters. As soon as Toad reaches that goal, we're done. So... What in the fucking Jesus? Alright. I know how to handle this. 
This is probably gonna suck though. Right. Rocket with burn dead in the middle of all of them. If this doesn't blow me away open, I don't know what will. That actually did give, give me a way through though. That is exactly what I wanted to do, which is very good. Just get them as far as humanly possible away from Toad. But it's not like it matters. I mean, I could literally just move him there right now and the thing's over. There we go. Done. <laughs> and everyone's fine. And I get extra skill orbs and what have you. And we are... Yeah, we're done. We're pretty much done here. This game is a surprisingly enjoyable strategy romp. A little bit uneven on the humour and the worlds are a little bit empty outside of extremely kid-friendly puzzles. But I do like the game and I do think it is worth your time. Might be worth waiting for it to go on sale for a little bit less than retail. That's just my personal thinking on things. But, I mean, it's got a fair amount of content to begin with. So it's not like it matters too much anyway. Hang on. I can push that out of the way. See what this is. Baffling blocks, you say, and then we hop in this cannon. I don't even know where this cannon would go. Over to another one of these. The Rabid Luigi model, huh? And this this is basically a shortcut down to... Well, yeah, there's another challenge. Hey. Yeah, challenge three. You know what, screw it. I'll see what it's like. We've only been here 40. Oh my god. Okay. I gotta get there in one turn. What the hell? Right, what what am I doing? I need to get someone over there. There's Peach. Who can't move very far. There's Mario. I need to get them there. And there doesn't seem to be a way across there without either going straight through a pipe or throwing them over. This is... This is a problem. What the hell is this meant to be? Alright, there's Luigi over there. But Luigi can't get very far. Hmm. I legit don't have a clue on this one. The difficulty spikes in this game are kind of pronounced. I must say, this has happened to me more than once. Right. Hmm. Love is if I move Mario here. Is that in range? No, it's not. Yeah, I've got no idea on this one. Let's just quit this challenge. <laughs> Jesus, I don't know what you're supposed to do there. I assume there's some sort of special ability you need to use, since it has special abilities at 100%, so... Right, anyway, yeah. That was a look at Mario plus Rabbids Kingdom Battle. This has been Blue Maxima, and I will see you all next time.
Let's <laughs> go. 